What's going on, everyone? Welcome back from the weekend for the Monday, July 24th edition of the MLB Sims video. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. We have an eight-game MLB slate tonight. We're going to walk through the MLB Sims tool for DraftKings and get an early look at how we can attack tonight's slate. Now, keep in mind, this stuff does change throughout the day. As lineups come out, different value opens up, ownership changes, all of that. If you want to use this tool to be able to Use it for your own DFS lineups with the most up-to-date information later on in the day. Check out the link below this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitter. There will be a link. You can sign up, take advantage of this tool. Uh, if it makes sense for you price-wise, it is the easiest way for you to improve your DFS game and become better, uh, regardless of what your skill set is right now. Uh, it will make you better. So check out that link if you want to be able to use this later on in the day once we have more up-to-date information. But we're going to take a look at how the slate breaks down right now early on, starting with looking at some of the overall top simulated lineups. At the top here, we have a five-man Dodger stack, three-man Pirates with Colin Rea and Patrick Corbin. Neither pitcher inspires much confidence, but they are both inexpensive, and this is a slate that just does not have much very good pitching. So paying down for... Pitching and being able to pay up for bats does make some sense. Corbin, 7,300 in a pretty good matchup with the Rockies. And then Colin Rea in a dangerous matchup with the Reds in Milwaukee. But he is inexpensive and he is just a decent pitcher. The pitching, again, just not the focal point of this lineup. But you're getting to Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, Chris Taylor, Miguel Rojas. So a pretty solid Dodgers stack there. Obviously a very high upside team. They're taking on Jose Barrios, who is a solid pitcher, but you still have a 4.9 implied run total for the Dodgers. They're also uh, not projected to get that much ownership, 6% aggregate ownership on tonight's slate. And then we're running it back with a three-man pirate stack. They're only projected for 1.5% aggregate ownership. Uh, they have a tough matchup tonight as they are taking on uh, – you. Yeah, taking on you Darvish in San Diego, not a good hitter's park, lowest implied run total on the slate, but they do still have a couple of good hitters in this lineup. We're getting to three of them here, Brian Reynolds, Jack Sawinski, Henry Davis. Um, Darvish has had more issues with righties than lefties this year. Davis is one of two good right-handed hitters in the Pirates lineup, Andrew McCutcheon being the other one, but Sawinski and Reynolds, even though they're left-handed, they are high upside bats as well, and it does make some sense to leverage against the 50% owned or close to 50% owned you Darvish. Next, we have a five-man Pirate stack. So again, very low probability, but when they come through, you don't have to compete with that many teams at the top. They're paired with a three-man Arizona stack. Arizona is projected for about 7% ownership. They are in a very good spot tonight against Adam Wainwright. So you're offsetting a very low probability stack with a much higher probability stack. Arizona, a 9% chance of being the top scoring stack. You also get to Luis Castillo, who is one of the higher projected pitchers on tonight's slate, pairing him with Rhea. We're getting to Andy Rodriguez, Carlos Santana, Brian Reynolds, Jack Sawinski, and Jared Triolo from the Pirates. And then you're getting Corbin Carroll, who's one of the best plays on the entire slate. Cattell Marte, also one of the top plays. And Geraldo Perdomo as your shortstop. Five-man Houston stack with two-man Washington stack and a five-man Houston stack with a three-man Washington stack are the next two lineups up. Kent Maeda and Patrick Corbin in the first one. Corbin, again, with a solid matchup against the Rockies. Not a very good pitcher, but about a 4.5. XFIP this year in a good matchup, and he's pretty cheap. Kenta Maeda should be one of the more popular pitchers tonight as he faces a strikeout-prone Mariners team. He has the uh, highest strikeout percentage on the slate uh, so far this season, so certainly upside there. His pitch count is a bit of a concern as he hasn't thrown more than 90 pitches yet this year, but a 28.5% K percentage on this slate certainly stands out. Uh, you're getting to a five-man Houston stack, which it's a watered-down Houston lineup without Altuve and Alvarez, but they do still have some good hitters. It's not a great matchup against John Gray, but he hasn't been as good this year as he has been in the past. And then you're getting the three-man Washington stack. They are actually first in stack score because they're so cheap and because they are in a good matchup tonight against what looks to be Jer Jacob Bird opening the game and Carl Kaufman likely following him up. So there is some value uh, from the Nats. We see a couple of those Houston-Washington lineups. We get KC in Houston, Houston, Colorado. Uh, then we get to a couple of Cincy five-man, Cincy and the Blue Jays, and Cincy and the Astros. Uh, this first one, you're getting Logan Allen, who, again, has some pitch count concerns and efficiency concerns, but he's been a good pitcher so far in his rookie season. He has a very good matchup against Kansas City. Pairing him with Patrick Corbin, that gets us to Tyler Stevenson, 
Matt McLean, Spencer Steer, De La Cruz, and Will Benson. So a pretty expensive but high upside Cincinnati stack against Colin Rea. And we're running it back with three Blue Jays, Vlad Guerrero, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Dalton Varsho. Uh, the Blue Jays are taking on Michael Grove. He's had issues with lefties this year. There's only a few of them in the Blue Jays lineup, but we get the two of them here. So that's a look at some of the top overall lineups. Uh, I think the big takeaway here is that we are paying down for pitching pretty frequently, and we are getting to a lot of different stacks. So this does set up as a slate where you're likely to have spread out hitter exposures. Now looking at those individual exposures, if we select our top 150 lineups, first we can look at the stack exposures. At the top, we have Cincinnati getting about 17% five mans. They are projected for about 7.5% aggregate ownership. So we're like 2x the field there. Then we're getting to the Cardinals, the Rockies, and the Blue Jays. Those are the three teams, or four teams rather, that we're getting at least 10% of. Uh, the Cardinals are projected for about 6% aggregate ownership, so about double the field on them. Blue Jays are at 13%, so we're a little under the field, but still getting there. And then uh, the other team was Colorado, who's only projected for about 4 to 5%, so we're getting quite a bit more of them uh, against Patrick Corbin. So as you can see from those lineups before, we're getting to Corbin, but also getting to the other side with Colorado, which does make some sense. Looking individually at uh, the, the highest owned plays. You Darvish were coming in right around the field there at 51%. Logan Allen were in line with the field. Same goes for Kenta Maeda. Over the field on Colin Rea, um, Bobby Witt, not getting to a ton of KC stacks, but Witt individually at 23%. He's only projected for 7% ownership. He's taking on one of the more popular pitchers in Logan Allen. So he is a useful piece in your non-Allen lineups. Uh, Brandon Belak getting over the field on him. I don't love that one, but pitching on this slate leaves a lot to be desired. So kind of just taking what you can get. He is facing the Rangers, obviously a brutal matchup. No real confidence there, but he's only projected for about 8% ownership. Then we start getting into some of these Reds bats. Uh, if we look at the pitchers individually, um, for the most part, we're around the field, which goes back to what we were seeing with the spread out hitter exposures. Uh, it makes sense to be around the field on a lot of pitchers if you're kind of taking a spraying approach to hitters and mixing in a lot of stacks. Uh, if you are very concentrated on hitters, a lot of times you're going to see that your uh, pitching exposures maybe uh, also end up being a little bit more concentrated. Not always the case, but um, that can be how it tends to work out. But here you have 51% ownership coming into Darvish, 32% uh, to Allen, 29% to Kenta Maeda, um, Colin Ray at 24%, 20 for Belak. Uh, one thing that does stand out here is that we are under the field on Castillo. That's probably just a salary thing. It's a good strikeout matchup against Minnesota, uh, but they are they do have a lot of power. A lot of it's from the left side. Castillo has struggled with that this year, so we're getting about half the field on him. We are over the field on Belak, like I said. We're over on Raya, but other than that, we are pretty much in line with the field on pitching, and we are not in line with the field on hitting, which is perfectly fine on a slate like this. Uh, you can see that if you look at the top leverage plays, uh, for the most part, it's hitters. Bobby Witt, Salvador Perez, Steer, O'Neal, India, Gorman, Blanco, Fraley, um, only a couple of pitchers mixed in there. So that's how things are looking right now. Looks like a slate where we are going to be pretty much around the field, not taking too many crazy stands on pitching, getting a lot of just the best pitchers on the slate, and then spreading things out a bit more with your bats, uh, getting over the field on some lower owned teams that are in decent spots, but maybe, maybe not the best spots on the slate. So that's all I have for you right now. Again, if you want to use this to improve your own DFS lineups, check out the link below. You can sign up. We have a weekly and a monthly option. Um, but other than that, good luck on your lineups tonight. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you tomorrow.